Julian. Um, when we met recently, um, you talked about, as an entrepreneur, the way that you look at people is whether they have fire in their belly and whether they have an appetite for growth. So just, just tell me a little bit about, tell us a little bit about the kind of people, when you start one of your businesses and you, you have Pret and now you've got Itsu and you are absolutely an entrepreneur at heart because you've done all sorts of other things as well, I'm sure. Um, when, you, when you hire at the very beginning, those first few key people are so are sort of disproportionately important. How do you make those kind of decisions? Um, I don't know, it seems so long ago. Um, your, your original question I've been thinking about a lot for the last sitting here was, was, how do you, was it how do you find talent or how do you keep talent? Both. C Clive Schley, who runs pret a uh, he was an Oxford scholar. He's a classic scholar. He's a very decent, a rather remarkable man. I'm very fond of him. But he has this, exp he has this saying, which he, he, s he used to say to me rather annoyingly, but he says men, men, or men marry the women they deserve. Um, and this, he actually said that to me about the time I was going through my first, my divorce, my only divorce. <laughs> um, but he's right. Uh, it's kind of painful, but, but it is right. And of course, women marry the men they deserve too. Um, so finding talent and, and keeping talent for many of us here is very, very difficult. You know, if you work for Google, it's, it's, you attract a lot of talent. It's just as simple as that. No wonder you went through 24 interviews. Um, most of us don't have that luxury. Um, we just don't. Um, but obviously, I mean, I take, t the, I try and choose the people I work with very, very carefully. I, I'm here now because a month ago or two months ago, I really think it's, I really want to spend some money for the first time ever marketing this new company I have. Serious money. And I don't know anything about marketing. I don't know anything about who to hire or where to go. I'm dangerously impulsive. I'm impatient. So I thought, what do I do? And someone told me about Suki. So I called her up and said, I need to spend, this is how it happened. I need to spend some money. I'm going to hire someone tomorrow. I'm in a rush. Um, I met someone at some drinks party. He seemed great. And she, and she said, this no, is, no, no, we'll come. This is so in. true. So, so Angus, and they came in and they lasted 10 minutes. They said, you will pay us 10,000 pounds. And within a month, we will put in front of you these people. And Interesting. that was good. <laughs> or maybe 20,000. Yeah. Sorry, it was 100,000. It was definitely 100,000 hey. pounds, Julian. No, no, maybe it was, that was the first tranche. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 100,000 pounds. <laughs> That's more like it. Yeah. And we will, providing you give us some more business in the future, We'll, we will put in front of you the right people. So I, I've never written out a check so quickly. <laughs> um, so it's about it's taking seriously this is the, the, uh, choosing who you work with. Uh, it's incredibly important. It's also very difficult. But we all know that. Um, I really don't know what I can possibly add on this. I'm not going to bore you with all the, the stuff I do differently. I think I do do a lot differently. I'm not nearly as good as, as, as Google. I mean, can you imagine? What we really need to do is photocopy that, and you're away. But <laughs> the truth is, it's not as easy as that, because we all work for large companies. You've got, it's a nightmare. You know, half of us can't even make a decision without some numbskull coming up behind us. Uh, it's, a, it's a disaster. So if you, really, if you really want some advice, it's, it's the only advice I think I can give you is you've just got to fight yourselves as individuals to hire people who are better than you. And when the numbskull comes up with some stupid reason why they don't think they're right, you've just got to fight. <laughs> but it's exhausting. <laughs> it's true. When, when you walk into it, into an itsu at the moment, yeah. and you talk to everyone who's there, which is which is what you tend to do. How do you feel about the people that that work in itsu and the kind of service ethic that they have and the way that they treat customers? Um, and and how do you motivate them to do that? Christ, there's three huge questions. Um, the the uh, <laughs> I, I I don't walk in and just talk to people. Um, I wish I could, but I can't. Usually I walk in within about a minute, it's like the end of the world because something's not right and I feel like I totally let everybody down, it's a disaster. So once I get over that hiccup, <laughs> um, 
I then remember that there's staff there who who worked so hard and put so much of their love and energy into this. So I, I somehow managed to, to to spend a second, not nearly enough, because I'm probably still frustrated with what went wrong. Um, but I think they know I'm genuine. Um, but I don't do nearly enough of it, looking after and, th and nurturing them. Um, and, and how do I motivate them? I don't motivate them. I, I have a lot of people who, who I take the subject very seriously and I have, I hope, on the whole, a lot of people who we have allowed and enabled to motivate the young people who work with them. And that is a science. It's not just common sense. It's, it takes a huge amount of hard work, follow-up, a lot of belief. Uh, what else does it take? Money. Um, uh, it takes... Uh, <laughs> It, uh, above all, common sense and a passionate belief and trust in, in, in the, the goodwill of, of people and the fact that most people come to work and they want to do a good job and they want to be proud. And I believe that passionately. And therefore, you just need to create a culture uh, where you can allow people to, to, to thrive and, and enjoy their job and enjoy each other and, and do something they're proud of. It's, it's very hard, obviously. Make it sound easy. See? And again, to do this, I put in hundreds of little things. Hundreds. I mean, I, I'm, you haven't got time or, or the, you don't want to hear them all, but a lot of them are pretty odd, I think. I think they're normal, but in the industry, apparently, they're not. Um, Go on, okay, you're going to say, give us one. Okay, Go fine. On. Well, um, I could talk to you all day about it, but we do, uh, for years, I, uh, um, uh, when I had five shops, there was a, quite a well-run store. Um, Quite a well-run store, actually, and, a, and there was an Algerian manager, Saeed, I think he was called, and he always hired, he just hired blondes, okay? <laughs> and it was quite fun the first few months going to see Saeed, <laughs> because the shop was, the girls were always cute, and, and, and it was amazing. Saeed had a huge sm beaming smile. <laughs> And he'd introduce me to the girls. This is Katrin from Sweden. This is this. And I'd say, Saeed is fantastic. And, and I think, but I promise you, after, once we had eight shops, we saw, uh, yeah, Saeed's shop didn't do that well. And there was something wrong. And I realized after a time, forget the blondes, there was something really not right. And, and from that day, I got to the, I, I really understood it, which was there's no point. Managers, people in positions of power, they hire people. It's, it's one of the benefits of being in a position of power. You, you kind of, in the end, make decisions and you hire people. You hire people you like. In Saeed's case, he hired blondes. But they didn't work well together, particularly. They just didn't. <laughs> and the rest of the hard-working, wonderful staff who were great with the customers, they didn't take kindly to the blondes every month either, because, of course, the blondes didn't stay long, uh, particularly after Saeed had got them in his office. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I did is I insisted... Uh, I, gave every, I, gave, I produced the money to... S people then work in our shops, and they do this all over the world. Uh, a whole day, they get, I think, now 80 pounds. And at the end of the day, at 4 o'clock, all the staff vote on a napkin. Uh, either yes or no to that person. So the staff hire the staff. Now, no one really, I don't think people really know that. But to me, it's kind of obvious. Mm. Um, but so what we get is, when the person arrives, they don't know if they've been accepted until the 4 o'clock. The manager, someone calls, not the manager, actually. Providing it's uh, 80%. You have to have 8 out of 10 ticks. <laughs> and it bloody works. It's unbelievable because they arrive the following week or whenever they start. And everyone is willing them to succeed because they all feel they hired them. Yeah. And that's at shop level. Yeah. That's, it's great.